I think they're great suggestions, but at the end of the day, you're going to do what you're going to do, aren't you? Aren't you? Aren't you just going to do what you're going to do? Aren't you just going to be who you're going to be? What's up? What's up? Internet friends, founders, and the entree pro curious, you've made it, and you're here. It's Venture Daily News Bits from a Founder's Perspective, guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday, after all. You had a great weekend. I hope you did. I had a very chill weekend, guys. I chilled, man. I chilled, guys. I chilled. I didn't do anything. We got carts that are all over the place. Being fixed up. I've had a crazy week last week when it came came to all sorts of things happening, you know, carts dropping off, meeting with people, interviews, uh, creating one pagers, doing diligence, doing. There's a lot of stuff going on when it comes to building out venture fund, getting feedback on my thesis of my fund, having meetings with. Uh, just it was just too much, guys. It was too much. It was crazy. So this weekend I needed to recharge. This weekend, I needed to recharge, and I hope that you guys had a great one. We got a couple of articles jumping right in here, um, and the first one is it's both of these are kind of clickbaity, okay? That's and I haven't read them yet, so I'll, we'll, we'll, you'll get my perspective when I give it. But the first one is about being close with employees, right? Being close with employees will it motivate them? So if you have a good relationship, if you're close with your employees, will it mo- motivate them to go above and beyond? Well, according to this article's title, the answer might surprise you, and it might be no. So being chummy with your employees is actually a demotivating factor. Ah, uh, I don't know about this. We'll, we'll get into the article and see what they have to say. The second thing is is interesting because it it, it was kind of crossed my mind this weekend. Uh, the second article is the easiest way to form a new habit without willpower, without motivation, and no effort, which I find to be clickbaity because whenever you're trying to do anything, it obviously requires some semblance of effort. It requires some semblance of time. And so uh, is there an easy way to form a habit without a whole lot of work? Mm, I think I already know the answer. It, it's probably just sitting down and doing something for like a couple of rounds or a couple of minutes or something like that, right? That's that's how you really start to form a habit is you just force yourself. Like I force myself every day to sit down at my computer, right? And I have to write. I have to write something. That's the only way that I'm going to get the daggone book done is if I force myself to sit down and write something. This is required, guys. This is required. Anyway, those are the two things that I want to cover today. I want to cover uh, being close with employees. Will it motivate them to go and beyond, beyond, above and beyond? I don't know. We'll find out. And the second thing is easiest way to form a new ha- habit without willpower, without motivation, no effort required. Uh, I don't know about that. We'll see about that. And in today's final word, for founders and community. I had a good cry today, guys, and I'm gonna talk about that. Oh, you're curious now? All right, well, you'll just have to wait till the end. (laughs) That's what we're gonna be covering today in Venture Daily. Think being close with your employees will motivate them to go above and beyond? Well, think again. This is from Joey Carnival. As organizations look to remain relevant and innovative, finding ways to get employees to voice their opinions, novel ideas, and even critical suggestions for improving the work environment is becoming increasingly necessary. Conventional wisdom suggests that one of the best ways to get your employees to speak up with their suggestions and concerns is to build a sense of mutual trust, respect, and confidence. In other words, you should foster a close relationship with your employees. And in some respects, this is true. For example, in my own research, my colleagues and I have found that one of the best way leaders can change, can get their employees to become more creative, innovative, and willing to speak up. Their best ideas is by developing a high quality relationship with them. But leaders should also be aware that there may be limits to the benefits of building a strong work relationship with their employees. 
In a recent study, which, is, which my colleagues and I published in the Journal of Occupational and Organizational Psychology, we found that leaders who foster too close of a relationship with their employees may actually be discouraging these members from actively contributing to the success of the company by expressing their innovative ideas and suggestions. Hmm. So by being too close to them, you get too chummy. That makes sense. It does. Because then you're no longer a leader. You're more like a friend, a chingu. And once you move into that realm, then you, the, the, the power dynamics, the influence dynamics changes a bit. I would know this because I've built so many communities where I've gotten too chummy, too close to people. And it removed my ability to speak into their lives and tell them that, hey, we need you to do this. <laughs> Here are three tips for ensuring the relationship you have with employees is helping rather than hindering their productivity. Number one, keep your friends close, but your employees, well, less close. One reason why a good relationship with your employees can increase their willingness to go above and beyond for your organization is that it can provide them the skills and support needed to take the initiative and advocate for change in the environment. Oftentimes, employees who have a close work relationship with their leader enjoy certain privileges not available to other members of the work environment, such as increased flexibility for how to do their work access to valued information or additional training. As the research suggests, such a privileges can help these trusted employees mature and grow in their role and feel better equipped to speak up their ideas and be an overall champion for constructive change and growth in the company. But before you go and join your employees for happy hour, you may want to consider the possible downsides of strong leader employee relationships. Specifically, our results suggest that as the relationship between leaders and their employees reaches very high levels, employees may begin to prioritize the relationship with the leader over that of their responsibility to the organization. Well played and well put. Absolutely, because they want to play the power dynamic. They want to be close to the good juju, the leader. It makes a lot of sense. And the problem is, is their duties to the organization fall by the wayside as they play favorites with you. In other words, employees may be focusing on maintaining their high quality relationship and devote less attention to conceptualizing and communicating ideas that can help the company. Number two, be explicit about your expectations. Although too close of a relationship with your employees can dissuade them from contributing to the organization's success, there are steps you can take to ensure you're getting the most out of these members. A good place to start is by clearly communicating your expectations. Part of the reason why employees may refrain from voicing their ideas and concerns to a leader with whom they share a strong relationship is that they may worry about jeopardizing the relationship by bothering or overwhelming the leader. So one way you can ensure that these employees continue to speak up is by simply letting them know that you value that you value them and you want to hear what they have to say. As our results suggest, no matter how strong a leader's relationship with their employees might be, employees will still be willing to offer their innovative thoughts explicitly if the leader explicitly requests that they share their ideas and concerns. But sometimes this can go overboard. I've, I've had experience, guys, where I've asked for feedback and and maybe I've come off too strong and the feedback I've gotten has not been great. It's been, it's been tampered with, not tampered with, but they've chosen their words wisely, if that makes any sense. And so that's mostly my bad. So that's just for you guys to know and me to consider for later. Cha-ching. Number three, beware of the bystander effect. Typically, when employees see other members of the work environment voicing their ideas, they are more willing to speak up as well because they feel it is a safe place to express their thoughts and suggestions. But while the presence of others speaking up may signal a psychologically safe environment, it may also generate bystander effects that discourage your close employees from speaking up. For example, our resu resu results suggest that when others are voicing their ideas in the work environment, those employees with whom the leader shares a close relationship may find it easier to diffuse their responsibility to speak up and instead focus on the leader's needs. To combat such bystander effects, be sure to inform employees, especially those with whom you're particularly close that your needs and the needs of the organization are aligned. Establishing a good relationship with employees can be a great way to foster their creativity and willingness to speak up if you can avoid the pitfalls. Incorporating these suggestions offered here can help ensure that you get the most out of your relationships. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put this plainly, guys, for you. Very plainly here. Very plainly. 
I don't have any answers. I don't have any answers when it comes to relationships in startups. You know, one of the things that as I get older and as I get more wiser, I guess, whatever that means, but as I get older, I realize that, you know what, at the end of the day, I don't know a whole lot anyway. When it comes to like these types of articles and relationships and how to have the best relationships with employees and employers in, 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 in a company or, or something like this, it's like, what is what is the right answer? What really is the right answer? Because I've been part of so many organizations where you do it one way in one organization, it would never work in the other organization. How about this? How about this, guys? How about you just be a responsible, overly responsible, radically transparent, overly communicative individual who lays out his soul to bear and let people see you for what you really are. And when they see you for what you really are, and they see you for the way that you communicate, how you deal with conflict, how you deal with dissonance, how you deal with pressure, right? How you go, th how, you, how you talk through um, complex ideas and lead, lead when the pressure is on. Like, why don't you let them just see you for who you are and decide how to engage with you effectively? You know, I just, like things like this, I, I think they're great suggestions, but at the end of the day, you're gonna do what you're gonna do, aren't you? Aren't you? Aren't you just going to do what you're going to do? Aren't you just going to be who you're going to be? <laughs> so let me know in the comments below if you agree with this article about being chummy or being too close with your employees could be a detriment. I can see it being a detriment. I can see it be a positive. I just don't know. It really depends on the context. The easiest way to form a new habit, no willpower required. Wow, no willpower, no motivation or effort required by Jeff Hayden. Hmm, let's see how this works out, guys. If you've ever embarked on a new challenge, you probably experience what I like to call the improvement ripple effect. How focusing on improving one thing, no matter how small, naturally leads to improvements in other areas. Research backs up this premise. Take leadership, for example. Google found that when managers talked to, to new hires on their first day about their roles and responsibilities, not only did those new employees reach expected productivity levels a month faster than the other employees, the managers became better leaders. Doing one thing naturally led to doing other things. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. The same holds true to exercise and diet. Many people, once they start to work out regularly, naturally begin to eat healthier. This is true. This is true. One study found that people who exercise for 12 weeks, long enough to make the exercise a part of their lifestyle, still liked fatty or high calorie foods just as much, but no longer wanted to eat them as much. As the researchers say, exercise might improve food, food reward and eating behavior traits linked to susceptibility to overconsume. Or in non-researchers speak, I might still love ice cream, but a byproduct of regular exercise of wanting to improve one area of my life means I won't crave ice cream as much. Which is why you don't have to make drastic changes. James Clear calls them atomic habits or a small habit that makes an enormous difference. Say you want to read more books. Instead of setting a huge goal like reading 50 books this year, which is what all these VC Twitter people talk about and how many books they read, ego, ego. Nope. Although there is one way to do that, commit to just reading four pages a day, just four. Just four guys, four pages. Anyone can read four pages a day, even if your day has gotten away from you and you're ready for bed. Still, it takes five minutes to read just four pages. Four pages is easy to, easy to stick to. And once you make that habit stick, you can build on it. You'll find yourself reading more. You'll find yourself reading other things. You'll find yourself starting to search other strategies, tips, helpful advice, etc. The pursuit of knowledge will make, the even, make you even more eager to learn. Doing one thing will naturally lead to doing other things, and then you can piggyback. Ryan Holiday, the author of several great books, decided he wanted to contribute more to his community. He decided he wanted to be a greater service, but he didn't do it. Then he heard David Sedaris say that he liked to go on long walks and pick up trash near his home. Ryan walks every morning, so it's part of his routine. So he started picking up trash he spotted along the way. Ryan's walk habit was already well established. All he had to do was do add something small to it. 
something he wanted to do, you know, to the base habit, like picking up trash, clearly. If you always send thank you notes to customers, piggyback a calendar reminder to check in a month or two later. If you hold a weekly staff meeting, piggyback praise at least one employee for something unexpected because no one ever gets enough praise and no boss ever tries it hard enough to spot their employees doing great things. All you have to do is think of something you already do and add something small you haven't wanted to do or you've wanted to do but haven't and combine the improvement with the ripple effect with piggybacking. Well, and combine the improvement ripple effect with piggybacking. That's right. So basically do what you always do, but add something to it. Makes sense. In the study about exercise, participants didn't consciously choose to have less interest in high cal caloric foods. The change in desire for health less healthy foods was a natural outcome. It happened without them noticing. That's the beauty of the improvement ripple effect. Working on improving one thing and sticking with it naturally leads to improving other things. Sometimes without having to make a conscious decision or needing the willpower to overcome resistance to change. But you can also make a conscious decision to make other improvements by piggybacking a small change into an established habit. When you harness the power of the improvement ripple effect and of piggybacking, you win all the time. Well, you know what? I can agree with this. I can agree with this 100%. Piggybacking is a great mechanism to use. Now, I've never actually thought about this, but one thing that I do and what I've done in my workflow is when it comes to all this content creation that I do here, I do a ton of piggybacking. I figure out, I figure out, hey, what can I do more of? What can I do, what can I do more of while I'm here or while something is rendering or while something is processing, right? And so I've done a lot of piggybacking to optimize my workflow here. One of the things that these guys talk about is that do something, add, just add something small to a regular routine. I think that's good advice, especially if you're trying to improve something. But for many of us, I think the hardest part, not, not to diminish the, the value of this article, but I think for many of us, the hardest part is just to add something new, right? It's just getting, sitting down and, or doing that thing. For me, I'll give you an example. It's, I have to, maybe, maybe it's because I haven't worked it into a natural thing yet because there are still days that I skip and I don't do it every day. But one thing that I have to force myself to do is sit down and write. And I'll tell you, sometimes I sit there with a laptop in my, in, on my lap, in, in my, my chair up there, and I sit there at least five, 10, maybe, I think I've probably even sat there for maybe up to 15 minutes doing nothing. Because doing nothing for 15 minutes feels better than trying to force myself to think about what I need to write about. It's hard, man. It's hard. I'm telling you guys. I'm going to get this book done by sheer force of brute will. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to end up writing another, another book right after it. That's just how, the, how it's going to work out. But anyway, I think for many of us, it's just overcoming that resistance every day and fighting with ourselves because we don't ever have to do anything. Right? This is something, this is something um, actually, it's a perfect segue into the final, the final word for founders and community which, you know, I wanted to talk about. So let's get into that, guys. Leave a comment below if you like this article or whatever. Smash the like button. Tweet it out or not. Did you know that there's even more value than just audio or video? Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at VC Hunting, and make sure to sign up for the VC Hunting newsletter where you'll be able to get weekly news on venture capital, startups, founder stories, and the occasional wisdom extracted from Peter's brain. Go to vchunting.com to sign up. And now back to the episode. All right. So here's the final word on this Monday, on this Monday, guys, uh, for founders and community. So I, I, I gave you guys a little bit of a tidbit today, and not many of you guys last this long. Uh, and that's okay. And I don't mind sharing because I want to be radically transparent. But I had a good cry today. I had a good cry today. And it was, I, I will be honest, it was a little forced. Um, so I was at the gym early this morning, getting my workout in. And there was just something about my body that just wasn't feeling it. I was getting cold sweats. I was sweating profusely like I usually do. Uh, for some of you guys know, jump in the sauna, you know, sweat it all off and then work out for an hour and a half and then, you know, do the thing. Um, and, and the thing is, is that during my workout today, like 
all the sweat, usually it's, it's soaked into the Under Armour or whatever, and it keeps me cool but not cold, right? It keeps me cool but not cold. But dang, man, I was freezing for some reason. I was feeling like, like the sweat was coming out in cold sweats. It was just really, really uncomfortable. That coupled by the fact that I couldn't focus for some reason this morning on my workout. You know, I got my headphones in and I'm usually in the zone, but there's just so much going on. I got so much going on. I got this book that I'm writing. I got feedback on my on my memo of how I'm building this venture fund. Tons of feedback last week that I haven't even gotten around to reviewing yet. I got two carts that I have to think about in terms of picking up um, and fixing. I got invoices coming in that are more costly than I expected. I have travel plans that I'm not sure that I can do because of this, this Corona, you know, fake news. Uh, I got all sorts of just, there's just a ton on my mind. And that's probably, again, if you guys listened earlier, it's one of the reasons why I needed to take a, like a big restful weekend this last weekend, this, this weekend, this past couple days. But as I was in the shower, as I was in the shower, guys, I just, I was just like letting the water come down. There's just something cathartic. There's something just really kind of, what's the word? Soothing. Soothing is the word I guess I want to use. Soothing about just having that water just pour down on me and just, you know, and it, and it end up kind of filling up and welling up in my gut and the emotions of, of everything that's going on. And I just, you know, I didn't need to cry. I didn't need to cry, but you know what? I was just laying, you know, I had my hands up, water's coming down on me, and I'm just like, you know what? Let's just let it all out. So I was just like, eh, eh, okay, okay. And I could feel some of the, the tear, you know, the eyes welling up and tears welling up. And I just let it, I just let it come. I just let it go. I just let it go. Just like um, Elsa in the movie Frozen. Just let it go, let it go. Um, it wasn't like a crazy emotional cry. It was just like, a, oh man, like a relief of, Oh, I needed to get something out. I need to, it felt, you know, you're, you're sweating out all the bad juju. You're sweating out all the previous crap from the previous day. And there's just something that needed to be welled up and, and, and come out. And so I, I had a, I had a good cry today. It was, it was relatively short, maybe, eh, maybe five, five uh, seconds, seven, seven, maybe 10 seconds. I don't know. I don't know. But I was just like, and I didn't even, there was no even like body movement. It was just like, Welling up, welling up, you know, water's coming over me, water's coming over, welling up, welling up, and it's just like, mm, mm. <laughs> but sometimes you need that, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, after, after that, after that little shower cry, and I don't mind admitting this, I mean, I'm human, and, and who's listening anyway, um, but after that shower cry, it felt good, it felt good to release whatever that release needed to be. And one of the things that I was thinking about, one of the things that I was thinking about as I was releasing all this is just like, holy shit, life just comes at you. Life just happens. There's so much going on and so much that's outside of your control. I think that, I think probably that's one of the biggest parts of this, this controlled, I was about to say controlled demolition, but controlled cry of sorts. It's just, there's just so much going on and none of it's in my control, really. Um, and I think that can be frustrating if you focus on it. I think, and, and, and I hope that, you know, you guys don't focus on that a lot, but sometimes it, you can, sometimes you can get overly focused on the fact that there's nothing that is really in your control and you're kind of just living and you're kind of just, you're doing your best. You're being intentional with all the things that you're trying to do, your hustle, your project, your startup, all these types of things. But there's just so much that's outside of your control. I was talking with a guy last week, and one of the things we were talking about was just timing and how so much of timing you can't control. And so, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, this final thought here, guys, for founders and community. But what I do know is that sometimes you just need a good cry, and you need to let it all out. And even though the, the world is, is, is you know still not moving, and not going anywhere and nothing's really happening even though everything seems like it's happening and it's outside of your control at the end of the day we're fine we're gonna make it through you're gonna get there you're gonna get to where you need to go and you don't need to worry that much I have no idea I had I had some purpose for this final for this final thing but you know what I think I'm just gonna end it there and just be radically transparent with you guys because I'm rattling on and now it's not making any sense but this morning I had a great cry that's kind of a forced cry, but I needed it. Let me know in the comments below. When do you need to have a good cry? We'll just leave it there. 
We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>